Today we're making a superb master board and we're going to use it. I have five ideas to share with you for turning it into your own supplies. The master board base looks like this and it's simply made with glued book pages and we're going to create a sumptuous mat from watercolour paint and add all sorts of lovely special effects. We'll rip this up, we'll glue it on and then we'll make some awesome supplies. This is an incredible project for getting lost in your own creativity. The process steps I have and along with 40 others, these are in Pinterest. Let's make a master board and share five awesome ways to use it. So on my desk today, I have, of course, those book pages for making the master board, which we'll do in a second, but I also have a little collection of the ideas, the supplies, things to do with a master board when you've made it. So for example, what I'll show you later is a folio. So you can turn your master board into a folio and put lovely things inside it. That's another one, nice vintage style. I've got junk journal covers. I've got ephemera that I've made at the back there, circular ones. I've got another fast flow stitching style cover. I've got a notebook. I've got an accordion style mini journal. There are all sorts of things that you can do with a master board. I love making journal cards like these and they're just sumptuous. They've got so much texture and colour and vibrance and happiness about them. On the right at the back there, you can see, well, you can see the mat and I'm going to make one of those with you today. I've done it in a few different types of paint. So I've got some different effects to share with you depending on what sort of paints and pencils you have. We're going to have a lot of fun making those. I've got my little supplies here. These are my paint sticks. Dig out whatever you have because a lot of this is substitutable. And then on the right in my little white wicker basket, I've got bubble wrap. I've got some beautiful... These are quite new gouache paints, but these are metallic. Those are Arteza. I've got an acrylic stamp for adding texture. I've got some watercolour pencils and some handmade stamps for adding circles. So we're going to get really creative today. Of course, I need some paint. That's the Arteza metallic, my regular palette and a Faber-Castell palette. So I'll just show you those. I'll show you what you can do with different types of paint. But it's going to be really fun and a chance to be very, very creative and just have a play. We have two decisions for making our master board that we need to make up front. And number one, apart from which book page to use, is how big you want your master board to be. And the second decision is how thick. And I can definitely help you with the second decision. The first decision depends what you want to do with your master board. Do you want it to be a really big folio like this? Or maybe you want it to be a smaller junk journal cover, maybe something like this. Or do you want to cut it up so have a big one again like this and turn it into journal cards and other things to write on in your junk journal. So I'm going to make a big one today. I've already made one that we can use to speed things up and I like to make them the full size of my green mat. And it's very simple. We've done this before. If you've seen some of my videos making those folios, you'll know that this is one of my loved methods for putting together a really lovely background that can be used in many, many ways. So I'll take my glue and I've got relatively matte book pages here. So that means it's going to be easier to glue them together and they'll, they'll bind. So I think it's it's better than glossy paper, which is harder to glue together. And I'm literally going to whack a bit of glue on. Fairly liquid glue. This is my 50% PVA, 50% wood glue. And just fill my green mat here with pages that overlap where necessary. Just using the boundary to try to keep it a little bit tidy doesn't need to be too tidy, we won't worry too much about that, but this means I get slightly neat corners when I cut it up. So the second decision I mentioned is about thickness, and I do have something to say on that for this project today. 
So we just keep going, we get some more glue on. It's very relaxing this one. I love it. I love slapping glue on book pages and gluing them together as a great warm-up act to get going at my craft desk. So the project today, I showed you those watercolour mats. We're going to make our own paper to collage and we're going to add some special effects but then we're going to rip that up and glue it on. And that means that when we make our master board we don't want to make it unbelievably thick to start with because when we're gluing stuff on top it's just going to get perhaps too thick to either cut up to use as a maybe a journal card or even if you want to sew around some of those items, I'll show you some of that. You don't want it to be so thick that it doesn't go through your sewing machine properly. What am I doing? Let's just have some here. I'm whacking glue everywhere. I'm feeling rather positive and liberal this morning. So let's get, let's get another one over here. I won't do the whole master board. I just want to give you a a feel for how we build up these layers and it is very quick. The other aspect I suppose is to not use glue that is so thin. Um, um, I like it liquid glue for me that's a lot quicker for this project than a stick. It feels like less work. I don't know what you think. For a masterboard would you use a a bottle like this or would you use a glue stick but it might be that this takes a bit longer to dry than a glue stick and if that matters for you then that's a consideration let's just get that on top oh it's alive so what I would do is literally just go over this and particularly where there are boundaries build up I would say about three layers so in terms of thickness, my suggestion is about three layers of book page and probably no more because if you do do more, what we add on top will just make it a bit too thick. So I've filled in the area. All I would do is now go over that two or three times, do a bit of patchwork, filling it in, and you end up with something that's beautiful it's just got that it's got that crinkly sound but it's thick enough to turn into any of those items I mentioned so now we have a master board what we can do is go and play and make those watercolour mats so we're going to create a mat like this yours will look a bit different and you can choose any combination of colours that you like I've kind of still gone with a bit of a an autumnal theme and when we glue it on the master board and cut it up, you'll end up with these amazing effects behind a focal point if you want to turn it into journal cards. And it's just very different. And I've got some new techniques and something really fun to play at today. So I hope you'll play along. The three sample watercolour mats that I made, I did use different paints and I said I'd share with you what I used. So th this one has quite strong pigment in each of the mats and I like that but bear in mind that will then compete with your focal point when you put it on. So the this one with strong pigment I used my Mucky Pup set of Arteza paints. I do love them. I love the colour in those and I added on the surface of that to get that gold shimmery effect some of the Arteza metallic gouache. You might have some other gold paints that you want to use. On the other two, just for information, and they all look a little bit different, I used Faber-Castell. So this is a set that I got from Stationery Pal and I think it's absolutely gorgeous. I don't use it as much as I should, but look at the colours in that. Absolutely stunning. You can see how I've played around with the greens and oranges. So that was behind and then I put the metallic gouache on top again and then on the third one really is use what you want use whatever you have this was purely the metallic gouache on its own and there's a lot of shimmer on this one and less pigment so horses for courses think about what you're going to do with your masterboard 
when you have finished it and you might want something that's a bit more subtle like this I'm going to go for Mrs Magpie's deeply pigmented page and we're going to add some other special effects. So I have my paper laid out and my paints. This paper is from my Arteza mixed media pad. I've used this a few times recently. It's £110, so relatively thick. That's 180 GSM. And the size of it is 9 inches by 12 inches. So that's about 23 centimetres by 30 and a half. And this is going to take some of the, the water and the paint quite well. So you probably don't want copy paper. You want something a little bit thicker. But it definitely doesn't need to be expensive artist paint, artist paper. I've got a quite a thick brush here. This says Round Faux Squirrel Zen Art. I think they very kindly sent me a set of these and it has a number 10 on it. I did get some questions the other day. And I'm going to get going creating a collection of colourful mats. I thought I originally painted about 16 but I've got more on here. It doesn't actually matter. I think maybe on a piece of paper this size I'm going to get about five across and I'm going for those autumnal colours and I'm not going to draw out the mats, I'm just going to go straight in, plenty of water on the brush and create the mats and oh it's gorgeous isn't it, pumpkin colour. I'm going for reds and greens and I'm really just creating things that we can tear up and make some awesome collage and background for our projects. Vary the colours. It's a bit like some of those watercolour strips that I did the other day. So I did swatches down the centre of a piece of paper and then I collaged on the sides. So what we're doing is creating some beautiful colours that we're going to use as background on our master board and I'm going to let the colours merge and do their beautiful thing by letting the water be quite prevalent in each of the mats. So get your brush nice and wet and delve around in some different colours and let the colours run a bit without all becoming a muddy mess. There's probably some technical words to use for what I've just described, but I don't know them, so I just play. But what we're going to do is create a number of these mats, and I suggest that you create some small and some large, and when we glue them onto the master board, you'll see how that just creates a little bit of interest for the eye. And this is where I really feel that you can let your creativity rip. I've got some fun techniques that we're going to add on top of these. That's a nice one, isn't it? That deep green. Love it. Look at that. It's kind of a deep olive muddy green. It's absolutely beautiful. Long one. The shapes don't really matter either. And then I've already got a little bit of paint from those various colours. I've picked a gorgeous palette there of autumnal colours. Quite a lot of water on these and just use it to go back over and when I go back over something I like to do just to add a bit of interest because I tend to paint in the same direction all the time. Change my hand wet my brush and just go in and have a go with a different hand and I feel you just get a different effect. We're going to have a go with this with a pencil in a minute. And I'm, I'm getting concentrated dabs of the paint, I like that yellow one, and I'm also getting really dilute amounts and because I'm using the wrong hand, I'm making marks in a different way on these. And it's some of that random element I just want to bring into this today. As opposed to being structured and controlled, 
I think it just shows through when you look at the elements on the master board at the end. You can tell there's just something a little bit, a little bit full of life and interesting. See, it's one of those projects to just really get lost in and sometimes I just need that. So we've made the basic mat and it is still wet and that's a good thing. Now we're going to add some of this texture and these special effects and there are five things that I'm going to do to add another level of interest. And I've got a watercolour pencil. This comes from my Arteza set of 48 which are well used. Love these, they're very handy and they don't take up much space. I'm going to start with a black one. I'm actually going to dip it into the water and then I'm going to use my left hand because I'm right handed and I'm going to draw in a little bit of a random walk a border around these little mats and you'll get something I, ha I expect rather wiggly which is the whole purpose not particularly planned where I'm going, it doesn't matter if you cross but we're adding texture and it's clear because it's black, so I can see quite a lot. So just going a little bit of a walk around, adding texture. And because they're wet, that watercolour pencil is doing a really good job. I really like this. We start to get something incredibly special. I love those greens and golds. So I've got effect number one watercolour pencil or just a regular pencil or a gel pen if you don't have any of these. Just something to add a little bit of definition. And then I'm going to go and do a few marks. And because, because the paint is still a bit wet, when I add the marks, it drags the paint out beyond the edge of the mat. I might do that in another colour as well. Just a few scribbly marks. I think this is a particularly nice project if you want to make something that's got a botanical focal point or a, like those birds that I showed you because there's something natural particularly if you're using the wrong hand because the the marks are not perfectly regular also means you do them in a different direction so I'm guilty of doing a lot in that direction because I'm right-handed I'm going to add a bit of texture, so I want some circles, and I don't have any circle stamps. So these are just me having a go at an alternative. I've glued a metal washer onto, in different sizes, a couple of corks. And I like to, I definitely like the idea of circles on these. I also like to use paint rather than ink and get a bit more of a rustic effect. So I'm using quite thick paint, it's watercolour, that's my Kuretake set which is from Stationery Pal and with any of these supplies, if you're interested, take a look in the video description box, there might be discount codes for you down there. I don't always mention them but they're often there. I've got black on and I want my circles to be maybe partial and at the edges, so I'm just getting a bit more interest going on basically extending the mats, I'm not really going for what's in the middle. If I run out of paint and add a bit more, I can go for other colours if I like to. Dippity dab. Again, your creativity, your mats, your masterboard, your project. Lots of flexibility and options today. It doesn't have to be a, an ink pad that we use every time. So I'm just getting a hint of a circle from it on some of the mats. I really like that. And I'm also stamping just on the side so I don't even get a full circle for some of them. And I'm also going to add a bit more texture using this, it's like a crosshatch squares acrylic stamp. For this I'm going to go back in and steal some of the gold metallic gouache that I had not used. Dab that on. Not necessarily evenly. Do we use up some of the yellow? Bit of the green, bit of the other green, like 
this. So I'll get multiple colours and be ready to stamp multiple times just across the whole thing. It kind of gets better when you've stamped a couple of times with this because you get more clarity when you haven't quite got so much paint on it. And I just really love the effect. And the last thing I'm going to do at this stage, just a little bit, and it's only if you want to, is add a few splats of paint. So I get some dots. I would normally do this in my splat box. And you might want to wait a little bit or dry off your mat so it doesn't run. But in the interest of time, I'm just going to add a few. There we go. Oh, I love it. I absolutely love creating mats and backgrounds to collage with. Let me know what your favourite project is. But is this something that helps you escape the world and just get lost in your own creativity? So now we have our set of mats to use as collage on our masterboard. And what I'm going to do is rip one of these up and glue it onto the masterboard that I've already made. Now I'm going to use the dry one that I had made earlier. I look at this and I think, oh, I feel rather hoardy, especially down here where we've got the gold and the green and the red. I just love it. I'm going to use this one, which I will, I also felt hoardy about. And what I need to do is tear it up and glue it onto here. Nothing clever about what we do or the tearing other than broadly try to get sort of between the mats. I think maybe the first thing for me to do is take off this extra bit on the edge. So that's better. So what I need to do is tear between and I would say tear don't cut because I think the rough edge is what we want. So give it a fold roughly where the gap is between the mats that we created but don't crease down too much. Just use that fold to give an indication and a bit of help where we want to tear. Maybe put your hand down on the paper as you're tearing then you don't rip through one of these mats. Not that that would be a complete disaster but it's not what we want to do. Fold over a bit and use that fold line to just help you tear between them. I think it helps as well if you stick to a colour palette though any colour palette is fine. Okay, I'm not worried about the straight side, don't worry about that. Tear them into individual mats. Right, so in this pile I've got reds, I've got the sort of yellows, I've got greens, and I want to make sure I mix up the colours as I glue them on, and I want to spread them around a bit. So let me grab my Uhu. I'll go for a glue stick at this stage because I want something quite strong and I'm literally going to pick one up, get the glue on and get that onto the masterboard in any place you like. But the idea is that you spread these out and that will give us that collage that goes behind focal points in different colours and it's just very different from if you were to just start with the masterboard and decorate straight on it. I've obviously got large pieces and small pieces and I might just, you know, tuck one under different colours. That's great. Now we started with a piece of paper for our mats that was considerably smaller than the masterboard. So obviously I need to spread these out so that we've got a bit of collage on any of the pieces if we cut the masterboard up to make journal cards or smaller cards of any type. It doesn't really have an up or a down. I might tear that one in half. It's a big one, isn't it? That is a whopper. And maybe that can go down here. If you wanted, you could 
mix other elements into this collage as well. And I think some really bold text would look great. Spread it all out. A bit like a crazy jigsaw in a way. Oh, I've got some pinky ones there. Let's get some pinky ones in the middle. Stick it on. What we're going to do is actually add some more effects once we've done this gluing and it just creates such a beautiful effect for putting a very simple focal point on top. I think what I'll do is tuck a couple under as well. I really like my the under over technique makes a collage look very intentional and it makes you think about all the lovely layers and see that. I've actually got lots here haven't I? plenty. I've done a very rough job of the gluing here. You'd probably do a better job to get all the edges down. down there. So now we've got our disparate pieces glued on, I want to add just a couple of techniques, just a couple of extra marks that kind of bring it all together. So what I want to do now is add an effect that makes this feel a little bit more joined up. So I quite like adding branches and leaves but I want it to look particularly irregular so the challenge is on here and I do encourage you to have a go I've got a fine brush I'm going into a brown and I want to add some really light-handed that's a bit too thick some really light branches and leaves that's a bit better and I'm going to do it bravely with the wrong hand because I want it to be wiggly and scratchy and I do not want that smooth line look. Now, it doesn't matter if you don't want to do this, it's just something that I feel like doing. And it also means I get the lines going in a different direction again. Got some green on that, that's nice. I'm going for the darker colours just to sort of, that's how I feel about the autumn at the moment. So I've got a very fine brush, maybe get I'm going to try brush with a sharper nib. This one might be a bit better. Let's go in. And I've, I've got like a bit of a shake on the left hand. It's not as straight, it's, that's better. And this comes through in the background. When you look at those journal cards with a focal point, you've just got a bit more of that wiggle about it. That's better. I'm going to go in, I'll use my right hand now, and I'm going to use some greens and oranges and reds, just add some really basic leaves. Smaller than I do and have done on previous journal cards. So I've done some really big leaves and I enjoyed those. I'm going in with the reds now. The reds will make, that needs sticking down a bit more, the reds will make your image pop a bit more. If you've got gaps, this is where we're starting to fill in. It's really scratchy, it's kind of more impressionistic than it is an accurate set of branches and leaves. And then the other thing I'm going to do is a little bit of drawing, because I enjoyed this so I thought I'd share it. Taking my watercolour pencil again, I'm going to use my right hand, I think that's okay, and just draw some leaves and put some lines in them. I'm losing a bit of the sharpness on this. I might swap to a different colour just so you can see it. So it's got plenty of nib. Wet it off. So a line from a leaf, make the shape of a leaf, draw the shape of a leaf and then just draw a few lines in. And it's really rough shape of a leaf, shape of a leaf, draw a few lines in and you're kind of making a bit of a pod. I just like it as a, an image, shape of a leaf and a few lines down, making a pod. Right, shape of a leaf, shape of a leaf, a few lines down, shape of a pod. 
shape of a leaf, shape of a leaf, a few lines down, making a pod. Let's do a big one here. I'm going to take one of my little paint sticks and do one final job, just add a bit of coverage to the edges of these mats because they feel feel a little bit white, don't they? So I'm just taking my finger, you could do this with an ink pad if you wanted, I'm literally just daubing around and taking a little bit, speed things up, ooh that's nice isn't it? A little bit of the white out. I'm not going on all of them. You see this paint stick, this is a little Brian paint stick, just takes away the edge of some of that white. I could use the gold. It hasn't had an outing for a while. It's a bit more subtle, the gold. Well, I've already got gold in some of the sheen we added with the paint. I think it adds a lot. Oh, that's lovely. So I definitely think this is a project. If you've got a little bit of paint and a paintbrush, anyone can do. And my final element again is just a few splats and they might run if your paint is wet, if you don't want them to run, let your project dry. Go in with a little bit of my well used green, not too much because I want to see all of those extra effects that we added. So now you have a masterboard, you can set it aside to dry and when it's dry you can cut it up and you'll end up with pieces that you can decorate in all sorts of ways or leave it whole and I'll give you some ideas for how to use it whole as well. So this is a piece that's come from just exactly the same sort of masterboard. I've got my little leaf with lines there, I've got the rather random leaves here and branches and you can see I've just cut through some of the pieces, the mats that we added. Here's another piece and I would simply cut it up into a few different sizes and add a focal point. So for this one and this one and this one and this one, I've sewn around them. I've added a just a little label at the top and sat a focal point that maybe goes with the colouring in the mat behind. So shall we just make one of those? So on this one I've obviously added a bit of teal, a bit of green, nice tall piece. So for something like that, I can see the same teals in this one. Maybe he could go on there. Let's just glue him on and show you what I mean. So one nice thick glue stick. He's got a lot of height to him. Maybe I could get just something sitting up there to give it a bit of balance. There isn't exactly a formula to every one of these. I think you do have to go with the flow. And what I would do after I've decorated it is then do the sewing. I like to do the sewing after I've added the focal point. So like on this one, the sewing has gone over the top of the bird. It's great texture, feels great. So that would be a card, maybe on this one. Where's that other bird? I can give him something to sit on. So I like the brown and the brown. Again, I've got the little, it's like a pod, isn't it? And my branches, I've got splats. I've got the acrylic stamp showing through. So I'm going to position him. Does that work under there? Probably does. Nice bold text. That can go underneath. I still want to see what it says, which I think I can. Move him up a little bit. There we are. Does that work? And I think what's nice is to add, have I done it, a little eyelet and you could add some string or some ribbon on any of those. So that's one way of using your cut-up masterboard. Let me show you a few other projects for making use of masterboards as well. So you can make a big masterboard in exactly the same way. And just as I did on this vintage one, you can turn it into a folio. So make your masterboard. On this one, I've sewn around it and that gives it a bit more structure and strength and holds down some of the pieces at the edges. 
and I've gone a little bit of zigzag in the middle as well. But you could make one of those masterboards and you could fill it with lovely things and it's just a gorgeous way to give a present to somebody who can fill all of these elements with some memories and write on them. Just fold it over so that you've got it into roughly thirds. I made a really big one so you can make these as large as you like and I lined the interior with book pages. These are just lots of nice flappy envelopes. I've got videos on all of these on my channel if you want to make them. You could make one of those master boards and sew randomly all over it. So this was a fast flow stitching project. So turn your master board into a junk journal cover of any size that you like. Gorgeous seeing the sewing on the inside too. And just make a junk journal so that could be a great gift. You could cut your master board up into index card size pieces and then use that for the front and back of an accordion journal. So you could turn it into basically accordion journal covers. You could use it to bind or be the covers for a notebook, so there's a bit more writing space in this. But cut your master board up, maybe sew around the sides. I've done it with zigzag here, I've just got card on the back, and use it to be a beautiful front cover of a notebook and that would be a really great present too. And you could also keep it quite thin, that's just another bit of fast flow stitching, and use it to punch out like I did here when I made my cheap and easy embellishments. So make a thin master board, you could maybe only do a couple of book page depths when you make the original, cut those out, punch them if you've got a circular punch and add these cluster effects. So again, I've got a video on how I made these. I actually splatted wax onto these to add a bit more interest and they were a lot of fun too. So, so many ways in which you can use your master board to make supplies for your junk journals and lots of things that I think anyone can make.